Practice is going well. The uh, kids' attitude is great. The effort has been great. And we've got a game this week, so we're really fired up. Last couple of years, Stanford's been running the ball on you. Have, what adjustments are you making to, to stop that this season? You know, I think when, when teams are running the ball, you know, first got to play a better pad level. Uh, second, you have to get off blocks. And third, you've got to get a lot of people to the ball. And so those are the three things that, that we're planning to do. Um, you know, obviously, you've got to pick and choose when you try to pressure and those things. But we, we've got to play with great pad level, better than we play with. We've got to do a tremendous job of getting off blocks, of not getting stuck on blocks and getting off blocks. And then we've got to run better than we've ever ran. Seemed like they showed a different aspect of their offense last week. Is that kind of... Is that you see as an outlier, or is that something that you're preparing for as well? You know, when, the way we view Stanford is Stanford still Stanford. They're a tremendous running team, and, and, and they've, they've always had some very good skill players. And so we have to prepare for everything. You know, they've, they've, they've opened up their arsenal, and we've got to be prepared for whatever whatever comes out and however they uh, try to attack us. What does Hogan do well at quarterback? I think Hogan does a tremendous job of leading. You know, when, when things are not going well, he'll put the, the game on his back, he'll run, he'll keep drives alive, and, and he'll throw the ball and, and make, make big plays. So he, he's, he's kind of the key to that offense, and we've got to do a good job of containing. He's big, he's physical, and you have to tackle him. Hey, people talk about when Michigan State played here in September, talking mm -hmm. about how the, they're kind of like Stanford, it's that same sort of smash mouth ideal. Do you see anything in Stanford that you saw from Michigan State? You know, I think their base offenses may you know are kind of similar because they're both run-oriented teams. I think Stanford's version is a, is, is a bit different than Michigan State's. You know, it's more it's more power, uh, and, and then I think based on last week, I think Stanford's opening up a little more. But there's the similarities that they're both running offenses, but but they're different. So do you take things then from playing Michigan State, the experience of playing that team, and sort of put them towards Stanford at all? You know, I think the Michigan State game will help us, you know, a small degree, maybe 20%. But I think uh, the rest of the game plan is going to come from, you know, playing Stanford in the in past years and then what they're doing this year. How tough is it to transition with their different style of offense from what you guys have seen in the rest of the Pac-12? Is it difficult now this week to transition a little bit and go up against a different style of offense? You know, when you play Stanford, it's a shorter work week because it's such a different offense. And so, you, you know, you have to have um, some defenses that you can go to that you can get ready in three or four days as opposed to the defenses we've been running against some of the other teams. You know, what you try to do is you have, you know, you have to have a package or two that you can apply to a spread offense and then apply it as well to a, a, a bigger uh, two tight end, two running back offensive attack. Any, uh, Armstead, is he a full go for this week? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know what the trainer report says, but he's looked good in practice. <laughs> I think it's day to day. Is that what? <laughs> Where does uh, Ifo Ekpreyalamu uh, rank in terms of other defensive backs you've seen go through this program? Guys you played with personally, and even guys that you know, were part of. You know, I think Ifo is Ifo is performing. You know, his his overall performance, overall performance been. The leadership quality and the play on the field, is, it's been up there with the best guys we've had. I, I think he's doing a tremendous job. And I'm just excited to see him these next four games because he's extremely excited. I mean, everyone's excited about the run as, as we take off the next four games, in particular the next game. But uh, I think Ifo ranks up there with you know the best guys we've had. And we've had some really good secondary guys, but I think he's another one of those guys. Coach Helfrich and Coach Frost said earlier that maybe you guys were pressing a little bit last year against Stanford, and Frost said that you had maybe circled the game. Did you have any feelings like that last year, and has it changed at all for this game this year? You know, last year I don't, I don't recall that. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't recall that in my meeting room. But, you know, if, if Coach Helfrich and Coach Helfrich, if Coach Helfrich and Coach Frost said that, it, it could have been. I don't, I don't recall that. Yeah, I don't know if anyone's that. Uh, you know, Derek's had a tremendous career. You know, he's been been a little banged up, um, but he's looked good as of late. And you know, just for us and for Derek, looking forward to him finishing this with a bang. You know, if we can get his best games moving forward, it'll really impact the defense.
And so, Brent, you have him in a different situation. What, what's it right instead of maybe Walker or, or not? Well, we're, we're rotating a fair amount of guys, and uh, we're trying to get strengths on the field versus the offensive strengths. And, you know, Derek, Derek is good against the run, but Derek's strength is that he, he can run. And so he's excellent in the passing game. So we've tried to, to uh, limit reps, limit guys' reps, try to keep them a little fresher and utilize what, what their strengths are. That's why you've seen Derek more in the nickel and dime situations. Down, Tyree had been moved over to free safety back up this week in the depth chart. Is that, how much of a difference is it for a guy moving from one safety position to another? You know, the fortunate thing in our defense is a lot of the, a lot of the calls require dual positions. So playing free or strong, you kind of do the same thing. So I don't think it's a giant transition. Is that where you see in long term? Uh, you know, it's, it's just, Right now, it's, it's the best thing for, for you know, upcoming, this upcoming game. You know, with those guys, they have to be flexible. They have to be flexible. It's kind of like Dargan being able to play all five spots, you know, Ifo being able to play all five spots. It just gives us more uh, depth and more flexibility. On the flip side, Juwan, uh, he's a guy, you know, early on this season, didn't hear a whole lot about, but they got some kudos from the kick coverage team last week, and he's kind of made the two deep. What can you say about Juwan and his development in the last seven, eight weeks? Juwan brings tremendous energy. You know, I think for Jerron, for Juwan, it's been a steeper learning curve. He was an offensive player primarily. And so it's taken him a little longer, but as he gets comfortable, I think we'll, we'll see his natural gifts start to shine. He, he's very talented athletically. Do you see the, the defenses in that sweet spot with strength and speed? Is this version of the defense last season, the season before, the times that Oregon has lost the same thing? Found that you know, in terms of game plan against against Stanford, I think you know we have to be prepared to do both. You know, at some point we're going to have to get in and, 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 and tighten it up and stop the run, and at some point we're going to have to get out there and cover their, their bigger receivers. You know, I, I think we have some packages that, that are going to give us a chance to be successful, but we have to get on the field and, uh, and see. I think the biggest thing in the defensive game plan is being able to adjust because now every offense is doing a lot of different things and you have to have we have to have some sub packages and do a good job of getting them in versus the right um, personnel groups that's the biggest challenge making sure that we have the right substitution groups in versus the right um, versus the offensive formations are you guys as a coaching staff better at anticipating that that flow from Stanford's offense and maybe you, you know I, I think this year we've, we've uh, done a Tremendous job with the communication from the box to the sideline of, of, of the flow of the game. And, and obviously, this, this week we'll need to be on point. And, and we plan to be on point. Last week, I think it was maybe last year, Gaffney had 45 carries. That was a big story that a Stanford game of how often they ran the ball. This year, I think they're like 90th in the country in rushing off it. It's a weird, weird step back for them. I mean, do you have any reasons why you might see that has been the case for Stanford this year? You know, when I, when I look at Stanford, I, I look at Stanford, the program over the last you know, six, seven years, and, and they've been a run-oriented team. So the run is, to me, the run is not going away. It, it, it's there. Um, you know, I'm not sure why they've opened it up, but you know, it could be because of their personnel. They may have, you know, good receivers, and, 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 and uh, they have a quarterback that can throw it. I'm, I'm not sure of that. I just know that we have to be prepared for both.